All right, let's go over uh, chapter eight, section one, intro. Okay, I'm gonna try and make sure you guys can see this. All right, hopefully you can see it all. All right, so we got a couple things going on here. All right, first off, this is uh, chapter eight, section one, intro. All right, and you'll find that in the upper uh, left-hand corner of your notes. So what are you going to need for this chapter? Well, you are going to need a graphing calculator, okay? You're going to need a graphing calculator. Probably going to uh, need some graph paper. Um, but most of all, you're going to have to pay attention because this is all new stuff. Uh, a couple things I want to go over. On the right-hand side, you're going to notice um, a little box, and it's going to say Word Bank. Okay, Word Bank, let me show you where that is. Okay, it's right here. So let's go over the Word Bank first. Uh, what is an x-intercept? An x-intercept is where your graph crosses the x-axis. A couple things that are very important about this. One, if your x-intercept, y is zero. It's probably the most important piece of information um, you need to know about that, okay? So x-intercept is where your graph crosses the x-axis. It is where y is zero, a couple different names for it, roots, zeros, okay, uh, solutions, things like that. So that's what you guys need to know about x-intercept. What is a y-intercept? Well, y-intercept, okay, is where your gr graph crosses the y-axis. And what you need to know about that is you need to know that x is zero at that place, okay? So x-intercept, y is zero, y-intercept, x is zero, okay? Now, the last piece of information, um, ooh, no, two more. Uh, the next to last is axis of symmetry. Well, symmetry is when the, uh, in our case, the piece on the left is gonna look like the piece on the right. Sym symmetry is when uh, essentially, you can fold a picture or a diagram over a line such that the left side and the right side match up or the top and bottom match up, okay? Um, so, like, squares are very symmetric because when you fold it uh, through the middle, you, you, your two sides match up, okay? Um, and then your vertex. Your vertex kind of think of the letter V for vertex, okay? It's that point at the bottom or at the top. That's your vertex. So F, um, since we've gone through all that, let's look at our uh, notes here, okay? And this is the intro. So below is the graph of Y equals X squared plus 2X minus 3, okay? So what I need to do is take all those words in the word back that we just went over and fill them in here. So easy ones to identify, all right? So we have our y-axis and our x-axis, or our x and y-intercepts. Uh, so this point here, notice this is my x-axis and this is my graph. That point right there is an x-intercept. Likewise, that is an x-intercept because my graph is going through my x-axis. Now right here, notice this is my y-axis and my graph goes through that. So that's my y-intercept. Now I have these two other pieces of information. Now I said with vertex, think of the letter V, and it's that point at the V. So right here, notice I kind of have a letter V. I know it's more of a U shape, but V for vertex. So we kind of have this V slash U shape here, and right there is the bottom of my V. So that is my vertex, okay? Now, that leaves me with this. This is the axis of symmetry. Notice, if I were to fold my graph over that line, okay? So if you printed this out, you can do that. So notice you have that dotted line. If you fold your graph over that line, okay, if you do that, Okay, the left and the right side look the same, okay? Where you can really do this is if you take it, 
fold it over like such, and then hold it up to the light, you'll only see that one piece of the graph. So that is the axis of symmetry, and you're not doing math right if you're not folding your paper and moving it around. So there you go. So that's what goes in those blanks there. Make sure to fill it in. I'll give you a second. Awesome. Now let's go over domain range increasing interval and decreasing interval. Okay, they give you some heat, uh, hints in there, some little cheats. Uh, first off, domain is your x values. So for quadratics here, okay, it's pretty simple. My x values can be pretty much anything. I don't have any restrictions on it. Uh, the only time you're going to have restrictions on your domain is when you're dividing by zero. Okay, you want to pay attention to that. Uh, when you're taking the square root of a negative number, those things are going to give you errors. But in this case, I'm not doing any of those. Okay, I don't have any holes in my graph. I don't have anything like that. So over here, my domain is all real numbers. Now, I'm a lazy inner individual. So I use this funky R. It's like an R with two legs. Okay, that stands for all reals. Okay, now let's talk about the range. The range is my y values. And this is typically, you know, pretty simple to find out, but you have to look at your picture. You have to look at your diagram. So x, I was looking like my blue line here, and I know this was tough for us during this year, so it was my blue line, okay? So, and I was dropping it down on my x-axis and everything was fine. But let's look at the y values here. Notice my blue graph, my quadratic here, exists up here. Why? Because I have a blue line. But as I go down, notice my blue graph stops right here at the bottom of the vertex. All right? Now, that means that nothing below it is part of my range. So what I do is I look here and I trace it over, and that's negative 4. Okay? So here, okay, negative 4, my graph is going to be y is greater than or equal to negative 4. All right? So there you go. That's your domain and range, okay? Now let's look at the increasing and decreasing um, intervals. So increasing is when it's going up, and decreasing is when it's going down. It's pretty simple, okay? Where is this graph going up? Well, it all matters about this vertex. So notice the vertex here on the right side of the vertex, my graph is going up, and on the left side, it's going down. So if I find this vertex, which is negative 1, negative 4, okay? If I find that vertex, I can find my increasing and decreasing intervals. So let's go with our decreasing first. So my decreasing interval is going to be x is less than negative 1. Anything over here is decreasing. Now I'm not including negative 1 because it's not going up or down. Okay, now my increasing value is going to be x is greater than negative 1, anything over here. So those are my increasing and decreasing intervals. So now what I'm going to do is I want you guys to flip the page, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my screen so you guys can see me um, answer the questions 1 and 2 on the screen so I don't have to draw everything. So bear with me. All right, here we go. Hopefully you can see my screen. Chapter 8, quadratics. Okay, we have a whole bunch of stuff there. Typically, you guys know me. I talk about uh, the cover page because they feel it's most important. This is kind of going to be your cheat sheet, so make sure you don't lose it. Okay, you have your standard form here. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. These are going to be very important numbers. Okay, so make sure you can reference back to this at any time. All right, this is vertex form. I really like vertex form, okay? Um, I remember 
the vertex is Harry Callis, HK, the great uh, Phillies announcer. Okay, so hopefully you can remember Harry Callis. And then we just went over uh, this page here, and you just saw the video on that. We talked about domain range, uh, increasing interval, decreasing interval, but this is what I wanted to talk about <coughs> and make sure you guys could see. So let's talk about number one. All right, and hopefully this works out for me. <coughs> so I am going to try and put in text for you. There we go. So intercepts. Intercepts, again, are where my red graph or my red, um, I guess, yeah, my, my red graph here uh, crosses the x-axis. So I have an x-intercept at this point and this point. So I have two x-intercepts, and that makes sense to me because my exponent is two, so I better have two of them. Okay, so let's type them in. So the first one is going to be negative one comma zero, and we have four comma zero. So we have our two intercepts right there. Okay. And let's talk about our y-intercepts. So where does my graph cross the y-axis? Well, that's right there. And that's the point 0, comma, negative 4. Okay? So let's talk about a min or a max. I didn't really talk about that. Well, a minimum would be the bottom of my graph. And the maximum would be the top. Now notice, my graph is kind of shaped like a U. So this means I'm going to have a min. If it was shaped more like an N, I would have a max. So for the vertex here, since it's a U, this point right here, and I'm gonna approximate it for you guys, is going to be a min. So let's type, let's write that down, min. And it's going to be at, and let's approximate that. So that looks like it's going to be 1.5 and just over six. So let's just call it, 6.2 okay and I will show you how to get it in a minute so you're gonna have to bear with me now where is my axis of symmetry well it once I find my vertex this is an easy answer okay so my axis of symmetry is literally the x value of my vertex. So that's going to be x equals 1.5. Notice it's a equation. Okay, it's x equals 1.5. Now, my domain, my domain, like I said, for most of these are going to just be all reals. Okay, so notice there isn't a value here where I have a hole in my graph. Literally, it would be a hole, like just a spot missing. I don't have that, so it's all reals. But my range, notice my range does not exist below this point. Again, my vertex, very important here. So it's going to be y has to be greater than or equal to. So let's see if I can. All right, let's see. Oh, it's not going to let me do that. So. Let's see. Nope. So it's going to be y is greater than or equal to 6.2. Well, let me go fix this real quick. Okay. So y is greater than or equal to 6.2. Um, typically, I would write this with a inequality symbol like I did on the first page. I just can't do it on uh, this PDF, but, you know, I'm doing the best I can. Here we go. Now we have an increasing interval. So x increases on the interval. x is greater than 
Okay, again, it all goes back to my vertex. And it decreases on the interval x is less than 1.5. So there you have it. Now let's talk about how to do this with a graphing calculator. Okay, so let me find my graphing calculator. Okay, pulling it up here. Go figure it would take forever to load. This would be a good time to make sure you have it. Fantastic. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to y equals. I'm going to clear out anything I have in there. So let me clear that out. And I'm just going to type this equation into y equals. So I'm going to do x squared minus 3x minus 4. Okay, now I'm going to answer these questions right here. X-intercepts, Y-intercepts, uh, vertex, axis of symmetry. So, unfortunately, I have to cover that. Uh, maybe I can sneak it in here. Yep, there we go. Okay. So, let's hit graph. So, here's my graph. Now, let's find the X-intercepts. Okay, so I want to find the X-intercepts. All right, so we said... That's where my graph crossed the x-axis. So I'm going to go up here to table because remember I told you it's where y is zero. So I'm going to go through my table and I'm going to look to see where my y, all right, my y column has zero. Up, oh, notice it's right there. Zero and negative one. So it's negative one, zero, and we had that. Now let's keep going through. Let's see if we can find the next one. Ah, four zero. We also had that. Now let's find our y-intercept. This is where x is 0. So if x is 0, okay, notice it's right there, 0 and negative 4, okay, oh, we had that as well. So we were able to find all of these just by using our table. Now we have to find the vertex. So notice I said it was the min, okay, and it was 1.5 comma 6.2. That's going to be really tough to find on here, all right? So let's see if I can use um, my calculator to help me out. So I said it's going to be right around here. So we're going to go up to calc. So I hit second and trace because uh, calc was in blue. So I hit second first. Now I go up and hit trace. Now I have all of these. Notice we can see easily by the graph that it was a minimum. So I'm going to go down to number three. I'm going to hit enter. Now it brings me to the graph and says left bound. So we're going to pick a point to the left of where I think it is. So I think it's right here. So I'm going to pick a point to the left of that. So this flashing point is to the left. Now I'm going to go to the right. So I'm going to pick a point to the right. Okay, that looks like to the right. Now I'm going to guess. And the guess is going to be right there. Notice I was pretty close. I said it was uh, 1.5. So this is 1.5. And I said 6.2. I was off a little bit. Okay. There's, I forgot it was supposed to be negative 6.2. That's my error. So let's fix that. So this is why we check. Okay. So it was negative 6.5. So we wrote six, negative 6.2. Not a big deal because we're approximating. All right. Axis of symmetry. That's still good because it was x equals 1.5. Domain still good. Range is still good, so we're all good. So that's how you use your calculator. All right, so let's go down here to this one. All right, so let's go down here. Let's enter in another text box, okay? So uh, text. Let's find our x-intercepts. This time I'm gonna do it completely without the calculator because I want you guys to be able to do this. Uh, quickly without having to rely on your calculator for everything. So x-intercepts, uh, notice they're going to be negative 1 and 0, and it's going to be 2 and 0. So there we go. All right. Y-intercept, okay, no biggie. This is going to be easy. 
So y intercept is going to be 0, comma, negative 4. Okay, it's right there, 0, negative 4. Vertex, this one's going to be a max. All right, why is it a max? Because it's my highest point of my graph, so it's a max. And this looks like it's going to be 0.5, comma, 4.5. Axis of symmetry, again, this is easy. Once you get your vertex, it's going to be x equals 0 0.5. My domain, okay, my domain is all reals. My range is going to be y is less than or equal to. 4.5 that came from my vertex increasing interval well this is going to be x is now it's a little different here okay x is less than less than because notice my graph is going up here so it's x is less than 0 0.5 all right and for decreasing well Decreasing, notice my graph is going down here on the right side, so it's going to be when x is greater than 0.5. So there you have it. There's those. All right. Uh, keep, you know, working on this stuff. Okay. Um, and on the next page, I'm going to go over that um, in, a, in part two of the intro. All right. You guys have a good day.